Have you ever wondered about the differences between atomic and hydrogen bombs, two of the most powerful and destructive forces that humanity has ever created? These weapons of mass destruction are not just a product of political and military strategies, but also a testament to the vast potential of scientific exploration. A clear understanding of the science behind these creations allows us to fully grasp their significance. In the early part of the 20th century, scientists unlocked the secret to harnessing the power of the atom. This knowledge paved the way for the development of the atomic bomb during World War II. A few years later, with the discovery of the hydrogen isotope, the even more destructive hydrogen bomb was created. We are about to embark on a journey through the fascinating yet terrifying world of nuclear physics. We'll explore the processes that power these bombs and the differences between them. So let's dive into the fascinating and terrifying world of nuclear physics and see what sets these two types of bombs apart. In the heart of an atomic bomb there lies a process that goes against the very nature of the atom itself. This process is known as nuclear fission. It's a complex phenomenon that involves splitting the nucleus of an atom into two smaller nuclei, releasing an enormous amount of energy in the process. Imagine if you will, an atom as a tiny compact universe. Its nucleus is the sun around which electrons orbit, similar to planets. Now picture what would happen if that sun were suddenly split into two, the energy that was holding the nucleus together would be released, resulting in an explosion of immense power, that's nuclear fission in a nutshell. Now how does this process power an atomic bomb? To answer that we need to delve further into the atomic nucleus. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons tightly held together by what's known as the strong nuclear force. This force is incredibly potent but it only operates at extremely short distances. In an atomic bomb a heavy nucleus such as uranium or plutonium is bombarded with neutrons. This collision destabilizes the nucleus causing it to split and release more neutrons. These newly released neutrons then collide with other nuclei creating a chain reaction that results in a massive explosion. This is the principle that underpins the working of an atomic bomb. It's a bit like setting off a series of dominoes. Once the first one is toppled, the rest follow in a cascade of falling pieces. But instead of simple dominoes, you have atomic nuclei, and instead of a gentle clatter, you have an explosion powerful enough to level cities and change the course of history. The atomic bomb then, is a testament to human ingenuity and the power of the atom. But it's also a sobering reminder of the destructive potential that lies within the very fabric of matter itself. So atomic bombs derive their immense power from the act of splitting atoms. But what about hydrogen bombs? Hydrogen bombs on the other hand, tap into the same energy source that powers our sun. Welcome to the world of nuclear fusion, the process that fuels hydrogen bombs and our very own star. Unlike nuclear fission which splits heavy atoms, nuclear fusion is a process where two light atomic nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus. It's a cosmic dance of atomic particles where two becomes one, and in that union, an enormous amount of energy is released. Interestingly, the hydrogen bomb doesn't just use any hydrogen. It employs isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. These isotopes are like the heavyweights of the hydrogen family, each carrying an extra neutron or two. When these isotopes come together under extreme heat and pressure, they fuse to form helium. And it's in this fusion where the magic happens. When deuterium and tritium unite, they form helium, but the resulting helium nucleus is lighter than the two original hydrogen isotopes. So, you might wonder, where did the rest of the mass go? The answer lies in the genius of Einstein's equation, E plus mc2. The missing mass is actually converted into energy, and not just any energy, a tremendous amount of it. That's the power that lights up our sun, and the same force that drives the devastating explosion of a hydrogen bomb. But there's more. The fusion in a hydrogen bomb is triggered by a fission bomb housed within it. The fission bomb acts as a spark, creating the extreme conditions necessary for fusion to occur. It's like a fire within a fire, a destructive force within a destructive force, amplifying power to a level that's hard to comprehend. So, while atomic bombs split atoms, hydrogen bombs merge them. But how do these different processes affect the bomb's destructive power? Let's delve deeper into that in the next scene. While both atomic and hydrogen bombs are incredibly destructive, the scale of that destruction is not equal. Let's delve into the comparative analysis of these two formidable forces. On one hand, we have the atomic bomb, the original harbinger of mass destruction. The atomic bomb operates on the principle of nuclear fission. 
when a neutron strikes the nucleus of an atom of the isotopes uranium-235 or plutonium-239, it causes that nucleus to split into two smaller nuclei. This process releases a tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat and light. The most famous instances of atomic bomb usage are the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima had the destructive power equivalent to about 15,000 tons of TNT. On the other hand, we have the hydrogen bomb, also known as the thermonuclear bomb. The hydrogen bomb operates on the principle of nuclear fusion. In a fusion reaction, two light atomic nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus, while releasing energy. The energy released in a fusion reaction is much greater than that in a fission reaction. The first full-scale thermonuclear test, codenamed Ivy Mike, was conducted by the United States in 1952. It had an estimated yield of 10 million tons of TNT, which is approximately 667 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. When we compare the destructive power of atomic and hydrogen bombs, the difference is staggering. The hydrogen bomb is far more powerful than the atomic bomb. To put this in perspective, if an atomic bomb is a hand grenade, then a hydrogen bomb is the equivalent of the entire military arsenal of a small country. However, the destructive power is not the only difference between the two. There's also a significant difference in the radiation fallout. Atomic bombs leave behind substantial amounts of radioactive fallout which can contaminate large areas for many years. This is because the fission process used in atomic bombs creates a large number of highly radioactive isotopes. In contrast, hydrogen bombs produce significantly less radioactive fallout. This is because the fusion process used in hydrogen bombs does not produce any long-lived radioactive isotopes. However, it's important to note that hydrogen bombs can still produce substantial amounts of radiation if they are detonated close to the ground and cause a lot of material to become irradiated. So, while both bombs are devastating, hydrogen bombs truly take the cake in terms of sheer destructive power. Both atomic and hydrogen bombs represent the immense power that humanity can harness from the atom. This power, as we have explored, can be a beacon of progress, or a harbinger of destruction. Let us take a moment to revisit the differences and similarities between these two formidable forces. Atomic bombs or A-bombs utilize nuclear fission to release energy. A single atom, usually uranium or plutonium, is split into two, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the process. On the other hand, hydrogen bombs or H-bombs employ a two-step process of fission and fusion. First, an atomic bomb is detonated to create the high temperature and high pressure environment necessary for fusion. Then, isotopes of hydrogen fuse together to form helium, releasing even more energy. This makes the H-bomb significantly more powerful than the A-bomb. However, they share a commonality. Both are products of our understanding and manipulation of the atom's potential. They remind us that knowledge in itself is neutral. It is the application of that knowledge that can lead to creation or destruction. The destructive potential of these weapons cannot be overstated. The devastation wrought by the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the Second World War, and the lingering aftermath of nuclear tests, are grim reminders of the peril that nuclear weapons pose. Yet, there is another side to this coin. Nuclear power, when harnessed responsibly, has the potential to provide a substantial portion of the world's energy needs, with minimal impact on climate change. It's a testament to the potential of the atom, and a call for us to tread carefully on the path of nuclear technology. In the end, it is critical that we continue to advocate for nuclear disarmament and the peaceful use of nuclear energy. In the end, the power of the atom and the hydrogen isotope should serve as a reminder of both the potential and the peril of nuclear